when you look at a new oil sands mine, it is very sophisticated and it's very high tech. The original bitumen project, it was very simple in machinery. Okay. Pile of exposed bitumen here. And that would have been actually uh, the remnants of uh, an early hopper, which would have been used to separate the rocks and whatnot from the bitumen before they began the separation process. I'd never seen anything like it before, but of course I didn't know that it wasn't going to work very well. <laughs> There was a view at that time that the world was running out of oil. And so people were looking for new deposits and one of the locations that they knew was in northern Alberta in the oil sands. The federal government actually sent out numerous geologists out into the area to actually map the size of the resource. But at the same time, there were entrepreneurs becoming interested. So the fellow that actually developed Bichamont Fitzsimmons, he bought the leases sight unseen. In the warm summer months, we'll get uh, some of this uh, bitumen liquefying like we see here. Um, I, I find it kind of a sweet smell, but uh, not pleasant by any stretch. <laughs> that particular lease has some of the best oil sands deposits in the area. So Dr. Carl Clark at the University of Alberta developed and said, you can separate the oil from the oil sands by using a hot water extraction process. And Fitzsimmons took the idea, but with a little bit of a different mechanical process. The Fitzsimmons plant, uh, it was not done indoors, so they were totally exposed to the elements. They had to mine by hand, and then uh, they would put it into the hot water tank here. Men would just lie on either side of it, and they would skim the oil off by hand. Uh, so a very time-consuming and labor-intensive uh, process. But he was able to do it enough so that, I believe it was 1931, he was producing 60 barrels a day. All of a sudden, people began to say, OK, it is possible to use that concept and make it into an ongoing process so it would operate 24-7, 365. But at the same time, Fitzsimmons had a challenge with trying to get people to stay on site. My name is Tom Morimoto. I'm uh, 97 years of age. When I was 19 years old, I was offered a job as a radio operator on the Athabasca River. They offered me $40 a month, and I turned that job down to go to Bitchmont because they were offering me $60 a month. <laughs> Of course, I lost out because I never got anything. <laughs> Fitzsimmons was running around the country trying to raise money, and I guess he wasn't very successful. They were trying to turn a profit. They were trying to get somebody interested in investing into the technology. But he never achieved the continuous operation. The process was so inefficient. The sand in the bitumen would uh, erode valves, and they'd wear out within several hours. So we were always having to take the thing apart. And, and of course, we were all covered with this black tar. <laughs> the workers would have their laundry laundered for them, just to try to encourage uh, more people to stay longer. Originally, I think you had about 60 or 70 men there working. And as the summer wore on, men gradually drifted away. There were only a few married men and a few of us that couldn't afford to go north, so we had to wait for the ice to freeze so we could walk out 54 miles to Fort McMurray. I must say I was some tired when I got there. A lot of the momentum fell away from the oil sands with the discovery of light oil. Fitzsimmons kept thinking outside the box to try to find different uses for bitumen, uh, different uh, ways he could make money selling the product. Unfortunately, nothing really came to fruition. An investor by the name of Lloyd Champion came on board. He actually ended up taking over the company and convinced the Alberta government to front the money to build the new plant, which was, of course, able to process a whole lot more on a larger scale. 20,000 barrels a day, it's kind of the magic number in the oil sands. If you hit 20,000 barrels a day, you are proving commercial viability. Once it was operational and he was turning a profit, he was to pay them back on a monthly basis. Of course, Champion never was able to run it for a profit. 
Unfortunately, he too ran into the same problems that Fitzsimmons had with isolation and the cost of doing business up here. Once he failed on his loan payments, the government had no choice but to take over the site. And once it was uh, proven to be a success, they closed the site down. I was in the Army for five years and four months. And when I came back, I went to university. Became one of the top chemical engineers in the country. That's the gas plant that we built in Dubai. What's fascinating, if you look in the next decade, it was actually Champion who ended up creating the great oil sands company that turned into Suncor, again using the same concept. And that's what Bichamont in the end did. It said, hey, you've got a huge resource. It looks like the technology is viable at scale at 20,000 barrels a day, which means you should be able to produce bitumen and sell the oil products at a profit. Plants are not economic if it costs too much to produce a barrel. You can't build a plant with limited capital. You have to have enough money to be able to overcome all the problems. <laughs>